Caroline, I called her, told her to be praying, and in fact, just Friday night, Mary and I went to see Karen Peck and New River sing. But she's got a song that, uh, you know, four days late, but he's right on time. <laughs> it had been four days. I got up Monday morning, and I'd been praying. I got up Monday morning, didn't have a single bit of fever. Hey. And I haven't had a degree of fever since that time. Sounds like Jesus. You know, he's still in the business, folks, I'm going to tell you. The reason he's not doing things for the majority of us anymore is because we're not where we should be doing what we should be doing. And, you know, he can't work with disobedient kids. And I'll just have to confess because I've been feeling like I'm supposed to come down here for about three months. Well, this morning, everything in the world was going wrong. But do you know, if we don't praise him in the storm, yes. we'll stay in it. Yeah. We'll stay in the storm if we don't praise him in the storm. And I'm so thankful today that I'm serving the God that I am serving. Because I know no matter what I have to face that I will be a victor. Because he's the one that's fighting the battle. You know, I may be the vessel he's using, but he's fighting the battle. And I, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen here today. You know, I never fail to go to church that I don't expect something great from God. And he's never failed me yet. And he never will either. And I better sit down while I can. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I'm Philip King. I'm your pastor's first cousin. And when she was, when you were singing a while ago, I could nearly see her mother sitting there because she sounds so much like her. I tell you, it makes me want to get up and shout. Because, you know what? I want to join her mama, because I know where she's at. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day. I don't fear death, because I don't have to, because I'm going to a much better place. And I just pray that everyone in here is going there with us. Yes, amen. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, boy. I'm you, there's a spirit of liberty here this morning, folks. The river of God is flowing. Wife, do you have a word to say of Mr. Brother King? Do you have something you want to say? Come up here. We want you to take a bold stand for Jesus. Amen. Take that microphone and hold it up there and talk to us. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I praise the Lord. He's been really good to me. Uh, back in the 90s, he healed my heart. And I couldn't even walk across the room without being out of breath. And if I was in church and clapped my hands... Uh, I couldn't sing. And so God healed me, and I praise him for that. <laughs> Loretta, come here. I want, you to, I want you to lay hands on this lady and pray for her right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The same anointing in the name of Jesus that raised Jesus from the dead, that healed this lady, that same anointing we impart to you right now for strength, for restoration in the name of Jesus, and for obedience in what God speaks to your heart. We call forth obedience so that you can walk in the blessings and the fullness and the glory of God in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, you receive that? Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, the Lord is in this place. He's always in this place. The river flows. <laughs> oh, the river flows. Hallelujah. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Those are rivers of freedom, liberty, and healing. The presence of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. We just praise you today, Lord. We just praise you today. We praise you in the storms. Yes, thank you for those testimonies, Lord. Thank you, Lord, how you send those people here to encourage us and to lift us up. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Did you know that the richest, the richest thing we can have on the face of this earth is obedience to the Holy Spirit? If we obey the Spirit of God, there is no limit to what can happen in our lives and in the lives of those around us. If we are obedient to the Spirit of God, we're rich in every way. Hallelujah. We just want to thank our brother and sister for giving testimony today. Thank you, Lord, for touching Loretta. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're not ashamed of Jesus, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Y'all before service. Uh, two weeks ago, Friday, uh, my sister Linda went downstairs to check the clothes in the dryer. And when she put her hand on the dryer, it was extremely hot, burned her hand. And when she opened it, the clothes were as hot as, the, as that. And uh, then uh, it, wouldn't turn, it wouldn't cut back on. So Jose, my son-in-law, he went down to Linda's house, and he brought back her dryer, plugged it up. The plug on the old dryer on one side was completely melted. He said, it's, it was only the Lord that kept your house from burning down. I give praise to him because he's always there. Even when we, when we don't know that we need him for certain things, he knows all. And I just want to give him praise for that. Amen. Amen. Right now, we lift up to you John McGowan. He sent me a picture of his leg. He injured his leg last Saturday, and it doesn't look good at all. But we know that God is good. And so he asked for prayer. What Right now, Lord, we join our faith together. We lift up to you, Brother John, and we speak to that leg in the name of Jesus. Healing flow. Healing flow in that leg. And we bind off and rebuke any infection, any complication in the name of Jesus. Right now, the presence of God, we call forth to minister, Lord, minister to his body in his need at this time. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you. Yes, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. That's the word of God. We send that word to him. This affliction, we call forth deliverance from this affliction in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you for his deliverance in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We pray for Melissa right now in the name of Jesus. Strength to her. Strength to her from on high. The presence of God be strengthening her right now in Jesus' name. In every issue in her body, we declare 
She is whole, healthy, normal as the Spirit of God ministers to her. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, the presence of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is here to minister to every one of us today. Receive his ministry. Thank you, Lord.
goodness, I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord is in this place. He's in this place. Amen. So, you know, um, I, like, uh, I like what my, my brother, my cousin, my friend, my, my goodness, we're going to have a family reunion one of these days that there's not going to be an end, aren't we? My goodness gracious. It's going to be wonderful. But I, I love knowing that this same Jesus, say this same Jesus. See, this same Jesus, there's not a different Jesus, there's not a different spirit, there's not a different God, but it's the same one that, that parted waters and, and caused the children to walk across on dry ground. It's this same God, the same, say the same God. The same God and the same Jesus that was born and birthed to a virgin. And that walked this earth and that ministered and taught us how. And, and shed blood for us not just to be saved, but shed blood for our healing. And see, it wasn't for that little group of people that was there because they left him. You know, he went there alone. It wasn't just for that little group, but it was throughout forever and ever. This kingdom without end that, that oh, I love knowing. You know, we had a, uh, when my sister here gave her testimony about her heart. That Listen, I was reminded while she was giving this testimony of a, a very, very dear friend of mine's son that uh, he's an evangelist, Ashley, and he pastors in Oregon, and his son was an evangelist then. This was years ago. But a little old lady that sat the third pew back in a meeting, and she had, um, he was preaching, and he just stopped preaching. He saw an angel coming down the aisle with a human heart in his hand, and he said, is there someone here in this house that you need a new heart? And this woman, little old woman, that you would think, well, now she's ready to go home. You just, you know, she, you just need to let her die. No, God wants to let her live. See, that's the kind of God he is. And this little old woman stood up and said, yes, it's me. They tell me they can't fix my heart. Uh, she said, I need a new heart. And he watched that angel turn around and shove that thing in her chest. And did you know she went the next morning to her heart doctor and she stirred up such a fuss they let her in. Because she said, I'm going to see my doctor today. And you know, they, he heard her out there making a commotion. And she said, I'm telling you, I got a new heart last night and I want you to check me for proof. 
And he checked her in every way he could check her. And he said, look here, I cannot give you an, a reason for this. And I'm talking an old woman. He said, I cannot, I cannot tell you what happened, but you've got the heart of a 21-year-old. See, I'm telling you, you know, when, when and I, I have to say this, that when we think, well, those things are over, but you know, the they's will always say it's over. They say, they say, but what do you, we say? We say Jesus is alive and well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about Jesus. Let me tell you something I'm more excited about is that Jesus is coming for us. Oh, I'm so excited about that. You're just going to be going along, doing your thing. You know, living your old ho-hum life. Don't care what, you know, how you do sloppy life. And here come Jesus. But he said he's coming for those that's looking for him. Amen. Who are we ready to get in the word? Swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? Amen. What does it say on the screen? Worship and praise. Worship and praise. You know, on a, I believe it was uh, not this past Tuesday, the Tuesday before, Jackie and I went and was in service, and and there was a, a something that I got that day that, uh, you know, and I shared with you Wednesday night that uh, that the devil's out to tear you up like a sheet of paper. But uh, Jesus came. You know, he came and changed his plan and his order. Amen. But one of the things I got while in service was about worship. And I've kind of carried it all week. And I knew last night when I was meditating and studying for this message that it was about true worship. True worship. And, um, you know, uh, I'm going to say it like this. There's three ways to approach God. There is one way to approach God in prayer. And when we approach God in prayer, you know, like you go to God, Lord, I need today, I need my body healed, or I I need something. I'm praying, I'm giving my request in prayer. And then there's another way to, uh, the second way, I'm going to give you three ways to approach God. And one is in praise. You know, we praise him on the instruments, don't we? Don't we, Lisa and Jeffrey and Jack? And we praise him on those instruments. And and when you praise God, uh, you, you are approaching God and you're telling him, thank you. See, you gave that prayer, Lord, I need healing. But then when you're praising him, God, thank you for healing my body. Thank you for delivering me. See, we're praising him. God, thank you. Thank you to the depth of my being for keeping me safe on my journey. Thank you. See, I'm praising him. But then the third way is an intimate. There is intimacy to have with God, and that is through worship. And worship is where you uh, you know, you got to shut everything else out. You, you can't let somebody else in. You got to have you and God. And let me tell you what true worship is, because we're going to look at this this morning according to the word. True worship is when you one-on-one with God and you talk about him to him. See, the other times it's about you. But true worship Look, let me show you how you worship. God, you are wonderful. You are who you say you are. You're awesome and you're holy. You are the, you are the master of this universe. See, I can't even start doing that unless I'll get off in there. 
and start telling him about him. And see, we, we come on, you know, we the church, we, we, we're real easy to go to him in prayer. Lord, I need this and I need that. And it's real easy for us when he comes on the scene because, you know, of mercy and grace, come on. Because of mercy and grace, he'll heal us and deliver us and keep us when we don't even deserve a bit of it. But he just does it anyway because he's so full of love for us. And so it's easy for us to go back and praise him. God, I just want to praise you and thank you for what you did for me and keeping me. But see, we're not good at this worship because we're too busy. Or maybe, you know, I'll just, y'all just look at me like, Pastor, you're the only one guilty of this. And just smile at me and I know none, none of us is guilty. But see, we get so busy. You know, when people call me on the phone with prayer requests or things going on, and yes, as a pastor, you're busy. You're always busy. But when we get so busy with the works that we don't have time to spend the time with the master of this whole universe and just to worship him, not going in there wanting to pray for somebody, however we will, we do, and not going in there to talk about yourself. But to just spend time talking to him about him. And so I knew two weeks ago that I was going to need to bring this message about worship. About worship. And guess what? As I was studying last night, I felt in my heart that at the end of service, we're going to worship God. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yes. We're going to worship him. And can I tell you, when you begin to worship God, that's when he gives revelation and revealing of himself. That's when you begin to get revelation that you've not had before through worshiping him. Because, see, you cannot spend time worshiping him and not know him and get acquainted with him. Amen? Man, all right. So I looked up in the Greek, and, you know, I found this amazing. And, you know, I'm just going to tell you in the original Greek writing, I looked up the word worship, and I laughed out loud. I really did when I read it. Here's what it said. It said to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. That's what it said in the Greek. And, you know, immediately my mind went to Jackie and his little dogs. He's got two little dogs, Willie and Waylon. And let me tell you, he can just look at them harsh and, and, you know, they'll tuck their little heads. They're just, they've sweet, sweet little natures. But I watch him interact with them. And when they, when they are showing him affection, oh, they just get so excited. You know what? At that moment, no one else matters. No one else matters. There could be a rabbit run across the yard and it wouldn't matter because they're busy with their master. Do you, are we understanding here? See, they're not getting distracted. And when the Greek writing said, it's, it's, like, it's like a dog when a, a dog is licking his master's hand. That at that moment, that dog's love for that master is just undescribed. Does anybody in the house have any animals? Do you know what I'm talking about? Then when we go to God and we are going to truly worship him. See, no longer can we go to him and worship him through religion and vain glory and vanity. But what he's looking for is true worshipers that we will worship him in spirit and in truth. And when I go to worship him, see, if I'm going to give him true worship, I'm going to worship him as if what he said in that book is really true. See, when I go to worship him and I say to say to him, oh my goodness, Father God, you are a God of love. You are a God of mercy. Then I'm going to truly worship him according to what he's already has written in this book of fire, in this book of light. See, no longer can we look at this like a newspaper, but it's time to get the word of God and begin to look at it and take him at his word. See, to truly worship him, I'm going to believe him. Yes. Say this out loud, I'm going to believe him. Believe when I go to him, I'm going to believe what he had to say. Yes. 
See, I'm not going to believe him because Sister Barbara said so. I'm not going to believe him because of some great ministry somewhere said so. But I'm going to believe him because he said so. See, and when he said, above all things, I would that you prosper and be in health. You can have all the money in the world and not prosper. He's not talking about a bank account. To prosper. Prosper is above and beyond. I don't want to barely get by. I want to have more than enough. I want to have enough faith that when I run into somebody at Kentucky Fried Chicken and the Lord leads you over to a whole family to lay hands on them and pray for them, we ready, aren't we, Jack? It's, it's, it's amazing. We, Jackie and I went to yesterday. We were in a hurry and we run by Kentucky Fried Chicken and we, we uh, got one of those little box meals and we're sitting there and the Holy Spirit is telling me, you need to go ask that family. If I come to them today, what would they ask me for? Jackie looks at me and he says, no, neither of us even said a word to each other about that family. Jackie says, well, I know before we leave, I need to go over there and, and minister to them, that, peep, that couple. And I said, well, you just go ahead. You, you know, I didn't even tell him that the Lord had already talked to me. We went over there and ministered and prayed for them, laid hands on all three, and there's three of them. And, uh, and let me tell you, they each had different requests. And you say, well, I just don't believe in that. Well, then you don't believe in the Word because Jesus didn't take prayer requests. Everywhere he went, he went about doing good and healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. He went about his father's business. And then here we are today. We need to be about our father's business. Can I get an amen in the house? Like you mean it. All right, here we go. The other, uh, the other, uh, the other definitions that a Greek had, it said to do reverence. And to adore. And can I say this to you? To reverence God. To show respect to God. And it hurts, it hurts my heart in this generation that we have now. This generation, uh, they, they don't even respect their parents, much less God. And let me tell you, my grandma King, she taught me. <laughs> she taught me well. With my first baby in my arms, I was 18 years old. And I had my first baby in my arms. And she would talk to me because I stayed with her. My husband was uh, in Vietnam. He was fighting in Vietnam. And she would, she would talk to me about how to raise a baby, how to raise a child. And I would sit there and think, well, I, it, she's just a baby. But see what she was imparting in me, stayed in me my whole life. And you think, well, it just, I don't matter. Yes, you do matter. You matter what you say to people. You matter what you impart into them. Because see, where, 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 the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And I, I, to this day, I'm so thankful for the things that the, my, my Grandma King imparted in me. The strength that that woman had. The strength that she had. Did everybody like her? No. Did everybody agree with her? No. But she was a powerful, mighty woman of God. But I remember her say, you know, saying things to me. Uh, don't ever spank a child. Don't, don't spank a child over because you're angry. Because you're angry. And see, as my baby got up bigger, I got to experience that. Was I going to spank them because I was angry at them? Or was I going to spank them because they need to reverence God and respect their parents? See, there's dividing lines there. There were things that she imparted into me. And then the other thing she said to me, don't teach your children to lie. And I was sitting there, you know, a kid with a kid. I, said, I thought, well, that'd be crazy. Nobody's going to teach their children to lie. She said, when you say to them, you're going to spank them, if they do something and you don't follow through, you not only lied to them, but you taught them how to lie. See, that stuck with me. It's still in there. It's still in there. And I never would have looked at it that way, but it was wisdom of God. But see, what I'm talking about today, I respected my grandmother. I showed 
due respect to her. But this generation that we have now, it's hard for me to find someone that respects God. So easily do they drop his name for nothing. And most of them don't even believe in him anymore. But I'm telling you right now, I believe the church of the risen Savior has got great exploits in front of them. I believe that there's no way they can deny the power of God because of the church of the living God. Amen? Amen. Say this out loud. We are the church. We are the church. Yes, amen. Amen. All right, so I looked up in Webster and it said to love, to admire, to adore. To esteem, to respect, all those things fall under worship. Okay, so then, so what are we going to do? We're going to, on purpose, make time to worship God. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about driving down the car, doing dishes, uh, you know, sweeping the floor. And as we do, thank you, Father. I just love you. Just praise you today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about turning your telephones off and locking the door. And you know what? Can I tell you this? If somebody's house catch on fire, tell them to call the fire department. You will tend to it when you get done praying. Amen? Amen. See, you got to make time. You got to do. Okay, I'm going to say this. Do you want to hear from God? Do you want to know how he breathes, how he smells, what he thinks? Do you want to know him? Not just know about him, but know him. Then you got to spend time with him. You have to spend time with him. Amen? Amen? And it's not the time for I need, I want, gimme, gimme, gimme. It's time that, Father, this is who you are. Okay? Okay, we got it? Turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I think we need Philip to come back and preach for us. How about y'all? Philip, you better get get ready. Let me know when you can come. Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to get verse 1, and then we're going to move right down to verse 8. Chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Say, of the Spirit. Into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Was it ordered and ordained for him to go into that wilderness? Yes, yes. Okay, let's skip down to verse 8. Again, now we know, uh, and this is some good reading for you this week. Read, the, read these, uh, read, in fact, read this whole chapter. So the devil took him up and he tried every way he could. But then verse 8, it said again, The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the, say all the kingdoms. All the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. If you notice, Jesus didn't call Satan a liar. He didn't say, well, you don't have the kingdoms to give, you have nothing. The reason is because who is the God of this world? Uh Uh-huh. And what is it that Satan wants? You to worship him. Now we're going to look at something here today. Look at verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only, and him only shalt thou serve. Satan came... For Jesus to worship him. In fact, he had all the glory and all the kingdoms of this world. And he said to him, I will give it to you if you will worship me. Now do you understand why that Satan will fight you to keep you out of worship? Because we are 
to worship the one true God. But Satan desires your worship. So if you won't bow to him and give homage to him, he will bring things in your life that you will worship instead of this mighty God that we know. There are many today that are on the lake fishing. There are many today that are out playing, sleeping in. You know why? Because Satan is hard at work to keep you out of the things of God. To keep you from worshiping, truly worshiping the true God. And so we, we as the body of Christ have to make a decision. You know what? On purpose, I'm going to worship God. I'm not going to let these other things come in between me and worshiping God. Because if Jesus, Jesus fought the battle. That battle's already fought and already won. But if you don't know that, and if you don't understand that that battle's already fought and won, he will back you in the corner and he'll tag your head. But thank God for Jesus. That when the enemy rushes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises the standard. Well, what's the standard? I got the standard right here. So I'm going to look in here and say, okay, let me see. Uh, do you remember the scripture that we had Wednesday night? What, what, did, what did the enemy have to say? Yeah, read it, Jackie. Look it up and read it. I, we need to hear that again. I'll get you a mic. Exodus in Exodus. Oh, I don't have Exodus it on. 15. Turn it on. Wednesday night. This is the scripture we got Wednesday night. Exodus 15, verse 9, the enemy said, I will pursue. Did you hear that? The enemy said. Yeah. The enemy said. Okay, go ahead. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword and my hand shall destroy them. That's what the enemy said. Now, let's look and see what God thought about all that. Verse 10. Thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Amen. See, just because, just because we've got an enemy, that doesn't mean that we're not the victor. Amen. Amen. I look at it this way. It's just another opportunity to give praise and glory to God. He comes against you in one way, scatter him in ten ways. Amen? Amen. Whoo, hallelujah. Okay, let's look. So we know that he's coming for our worship just like he did Jesus. Jesus is our example. And when he came to him, he tried everything else. But all he was after, he was after his worship. So if I got anybody in the house that today you are going to determine that you're going to worship God more than you have in the past. Amen. Okay, now let's turn to St. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 4. Verse 14. We're going to get verse 14, then we're going to skip down to 19. St. John chapter 4, verse 14 says, this is Jesus talking. You remember the woman that came and he asked her for a drink and, and uh, they, they conversed. They were, they were conversing at the well. And he says to her in verse 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be where? Where is it? I'm sorry, where is this water? It's in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You notice it said a well of water springing up. like I call that an artesian well. A well of water. It did not say a cup full. It didn't say a few drops of water, but it is a well springing up that, that is a continual thing that he, that he give us on the inside. He's talking to her about the spirit of the living God. See, there's only one spirit. 
There's, there's, there's Father God, there's Jesus the Son, there's the Holy Ghost, but it's all of the same Spirit. There's not 15 different spirits. Can I get an amen in the house? They all operate and function together in our behalf. Amen? But he's telling us, he's, he, listen, you say, yeah, but he's talking to that woman at the well. No, say this out loud, he's talking to me. See, you got to take the Word of God and bring it into the right now. Right now, what's He doing for me? He's getting the boy. Woo, glory. He's giving you a well of water that is living, alive, that is springing up out of your innermost being. Now, my question is, why would you let the enemy cause you to worship and to adore something else besides the living God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He said that I'm giving you. I'm, he said, but if you'll just drink, if you, you'll never thirst again. In other words, this well won't dry up. It won't dry up. Amen. Amen. Now skip down to verse 19. The woman said to him, sir, I, per- I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Verse 21. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22. You worship ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. How many knows that God went to the Jews first? Thank God for the grafting. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Look at verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is. Now, is he saying that it's operating right then? For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers. Say true worshipers. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in, how's he going to, how are we going to truly worship? In spirit and in truth. What does that mean? That means I got to get it out of my head and I got to let it come out of that well that, that's on the inside of me to truly worship God. See, I can talk to God all day long because we do, amen, don't we? But to truly worship God, I got to get my head to shut up. I got to get my head to shut down. And then I've got to worship him by my spirit. And see, my spirit will My spirit will only be coming in agreement with what he's already established and what he's already had to say. See, when I go to worship God in spirit, I'm not going to go to him and say, God, I've been sick for, for two weeks now. And where are you? Why would you heal me? When I will go to God in when I worship him by the spirit as I will say thank you Father God that you healed me over 2,000 years ago I want to thank you and praise you for what you've already done see I will be in agreement with what God has already established instead of the worship that Satan is want me to bend and bow and to deny the power of the living God are we understanding this So if I'm going to truly worship him, I got to worship him according to what his word says. Are we getting this? Now then, I come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? We got it, didn't we? We got it. All right. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Look, He doesn't want you to come in with your your uh, your analogies and your knowledge. He wants you. Why? Because He is spirit. God is not flesh and blood. God is spirit. So how can I relate to him? How can I talk to him? How can I be with him? How? By my spirit and not my head. Are we getting this? Okay. Verse 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him 
Sometimes, sorta, kinda. Is that what it says? No. It says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is good. Is this good? This is good stuff, isn't it? Now turn to Psalms 146. Psalms 146. Boy, I'm telling you, it was hard to pick and choose last night. I had to really be open with the Spirit because there's too much, too much in this book. Okay, Psalms 146, 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2. Praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. Now see what he's doing here. Okay. My spirit wants to worship and praise him. But my soul, okay, and I know, you know what? I'm going to say this because I know everybody has the same thing to deal with. So you'll go in and you'll think, I'm going to worship the Lord a while. I'm going to spend some time with him. And while you're in there, you know, you, you'll start worshiping, praising him. And here's what your soulish realm starts saying. You know, you need to put that load of clothes in. It could be washing while you're praying. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what your soul will say. Remember, you're about out of milk. You need to run the store and get some milk. Your soul will say, did you remember to put that in your checkbook? That's what your soul. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, so look, look. Now, see, we got an answer for that, though. See, let me show you. We're going to read this again. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. So what is he doing? He's telling his soul to be quiet. He's telling his soul, soul, you can get the milk later. You can do whatever later. Right now, soul, you are going to worship God. Huh? Are we getting this? Okay. Okay. Verse 2. While I live, now then, it's a decision. While I live, will I praise the Lord? I will sing praises unto my God while I have while I have any being. You say, yeah, but I'm not a great singer. It didn't say you got to be a great singer. It didn't even say you have to carry a tune. Isn't that good? He didn't even say you have to carry a tune. But let me tell you what happens. I can tell you this from my own experience. When you shut that soul down and you tell that soul, no, you're going to, no, you're going to worship God today. That's what you're going to do. And you'll get in there and start talking to it. God, you're so wonderful. And, you, and listen, out of that river, out of that innermost being, starts coming up words. I just going to praise you. I'm going to praise you. Because you're holy and righteous and worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Oh, your train fills the temple. You are wonderful. See, it starts coming up out of here. It, st- it passes this. Do you understand? It, pass- it bypasses this. It starts coming up here. And that is what true worship is. When you truly worship Him in song. And sometimes you'll remember an old, old song. And that thing will start coming up out of here. Does anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh, I will cherish the old rugged cross. Oh, and my trophies. At last I'll lay down. See, and you just get off in there. But what you got to do is you got to deal with the soul first. Say this out loud. I got to deal with my soul first. So I can truly worship. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. We're getting this. We're getting this, Lord. Okay. uh, Now, uh, stay in Psalms. Get Psalms 147. Psalms 147. And I'm going to give you one verse right there. Verse 15. The reason that we can have peace and comfort when we're in the storm, to, to, to shut this thing down and to go spend that time 
worshiping God. It's the, the comfort comes from knowing that not one of his promises will fall to the ground. See, we can go in there with peace and comfort knowing you say, yeah, but I want it right now. Okay, and I know nobody here has ever said, thought that either. But you know how we are. So, you know, I've, I've made appointments for them. They, you know, like a, get your teeth cleaned or whatever. And they say, well, when do you need it? I go, yesterday. <laughs> Look what verse 15 says. This is, he says, he sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. Where are you living at? And what's his commandment being done? He's sending it forth. I don't, have to be, I don't have to struggle with this. I can go in and worship him in praise and worship when everything is topsy-turvy, when everything is going wrong. See, I can go in there. How can I go in there? Because I know he's a man of his word. You understand? It says he sends forth his commandment upon earth. His, wor His word, His word runneth very swiftly. His word, right this moment while we're sitting, and those of you who are sitting here and those of you who are live stream, right at this very moment, the word of the living God is running through this word on your behalf. The word of God is running swiftly through the earth to bring to pass the things He promised you. The word of God is moving. So how can I be peaceful? How can I rest? How can I have comfort? Because I know the word of God is out working in my behalf to bring to pass those things that he promised me in his book. Amen. Woo, glory. All right, last scripture, Psalms 138. 138. And we're going to get verse 7 and 8. And everyone stand while we read this last scripture. We're going to read it together. Verse 7. Here we go. You ready? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. How long does his mercy endure? Forever. It's his word right now, roaming this earth, to bring to pass those things which you have gone to him for. Yes, they are. You know, I said like this. If I live, I live in Christ. If I die, I die in Christ. But the things that I've laid before him, if I see them with my eyes or not, it doesn't matter because I know they shall come to pass. Amen. How about that? Yes. Is that where our peace is today? Now, do we understand what prayer is and what praise is and what worship is? Yes. And today, we're going to worship. We're going to worship him. And so you say, well, how are we going to do that? So first of all, if you're able to lift your hands, lift your hands to him. And now we're going to just shut your eyes. And those of you on live stream, join us. That we are going to talk to God about God. And right now from your heart, you start saying things to him like this. God, you're awesome. Let's say that out loud. God, you're awesome. Father, you're holy. You're wonderful. You love me. And for that, I love you. Oh, dear Lord, you are, you are so wonderful. See, just get entered in there and just can keep talking to him about him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you are so beautiful. You are the beautiful rose of Sharon. Oh, Jesus, you are the lily of the valley. Jesus, you are the bright and morning star. You are, you are, you are so wonderful. 
See, just keep on worshiping. There you go. There it is. See, his presence is filling this place right now. Just keep on worshiping him. Worship him by spirit. Oh, soul, you will worship the king today. Oh, yeah, just keep worshiping him. Oh, yeah, just keep worshiping him. You know, he's here to do mighty things. He's here to do mighty things. Now then, let's praise him. The things that you know he's already done for you. Praise him, God. Thank you. That just when I was at the edge of breaking, when I was on the verge of dying, here you come. You saved me. See, begin to praise him right now. Just praise him for those times that you shouldn't even be here. But here you are. Praise him. Oh, God, we praise you. Lord, we praise you today. We worship you today. We worship. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. Just We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We worship you this day, Lord. We praise you for all of your mighty, wonderful things you've done in this earth, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Now you take your prayers to him. See, you got to start with worship with him. And as you praise him, you're reminded of, oh God, thank you for healing me of emphysema. Thank you, Lord, when the doctor said I had five years. Twenty years ago, you healed me. Thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you what you've done for me no man could do. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you that when I was flipping that car in over in in the Grand Oregon, that I came out of that thing because of, of you telling my mother to pray. <laughs> Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you. Oh, I love you. 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 How awesome you are. Oh, how wonderful you are. How glorious you are. Thank you. We are here for one another in this house. Listen, obey the Lord today. Just obey the Lord. If you feel led to pray for someone, you feel led to minister to someone, this is a place of freedom. Obey the Lord today. Oh, yes. Yes. Is there anyone in the house that you need hands laid on today? There's a, you, you know, there's miracles in the making. Don't fall short of your miracle. You continue to, you know, don't put it in your time. You put it in God's time. You put it in God's time. Amen.
enter in We have come to worship the Lord We have come to worship the Lord Oh, to bow down before Him Oh, to love and adore Him We have come to worship the Lord received this morning did we learn and we know how to enter in and worship him and how his presence is yes yes praise his name thank you Lord are we expecting great things this week great things you know, he's not a God of one miracle. He's a God of miracle. Uh, he's a miracle God. Expect. Wake up in the morning expecting God to be miraculous that day. Amen. How I many's looking for him to come? We're looking for him to come any moment. Amen. All right. Are we going to carry out of here what we received today? Yes. And uh, I'm just going to say this, uh, that uh, someone in this house, you're really, uh, you're really worried about, it's a, it's a son. You're worried about your son. You've really been, uh, it's been like a heaviness on you about your son. But the Lord wants me to tell you that he's working He's working behind the scenes and for you just to continue to praise him for that. That, uh, that you, you, you don't need to worry. You just need to know that God is working. And, the, and uh, you know, you need to understand that, uh, that when, when the Lord begins to work on someone by the Spirit, it seems like they get meaner, madder, and, and you know what I'm saying, because there's, there's two spirits at war there. But the Lord just wants me to assure you to not, not lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your place. Just continue to praise Him for Him, the promise that He gave you to for you and your children and your children's children. That he gave you that promise. And uh, just to enter in and praise him for that. Yes, amen. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Eyes of faith. You must have eyes of faith. You say, yeah, but they're just way out there. How can, how can it be? But see, God can go way out there. In fact, Jesus said, I'll, I'll leave the flock that's safe, and I'll go after that one. Isn't that wonderful to know? And uh, you know something Jackie said to me the other day that really meant, and uh, if you will share that, Jackie, about the shepherd and his, um, the reason he has a staff and what he does uh, about the... The shepherd has a... He says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. And there's a sheep. The, the rod is a rod of reproof. And it also, uh, it's a rod that, that keeps things lined up in your life so that you go in the good way. The staff uh, the shepherd uses to go on the 
plateau where the sheep are going to graze. And he'll stick that staff in snake holes and, and drive that snake out of there and get it out and whip it and kill it before the sheep ever get to the, the plateau to graze. So the rod reproves the sheep and the staff protects the sheep. And if they fall over on a ledge, the hook on that staff can reach down and pull that sheep off that ledge so that the shepherd takes care of us. And, yes. and so that in that 23rd Psalm, that's what that's what is it about. Yes, isn't that beautiful? That, 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 that a good shepherd, he goes before us and makes our way straight. If they're snake holes, he's jabbing that thing, running them out so he can destroy them, so we can, we can go in peace. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Amen. Amen. Are all hearts clear? Are all hearts clear this morning? All right. You ready for a blessing? All right. Here we go. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed, I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to. God causes it to prosper. God causes it to prosper. Our children, Our children shall, marry the right the shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full, filled up, and running over with health wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, and nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Be back Wednesday night at 7.